Logging is not just appending stuff to a file. If you want to use your logs later, you have to log in a proper way. And that's what we are going to learn in this video. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you how to do it in .NET. So, if you're new and want to find your way back, subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell so you will be notified when a new video arrives. Without further ado, let's dig in. Now, let's talk about logging. What is logging? Logging is recording information about actions and states. Some of your users are experiencing a problem. You have to keep a track of what they have done to be able to reproduce the problem. And you want to know what was the state of the application when that happened. Now, the user calls your support team. The support team don't have access to the code. They can't see what's happening inside your code. So your logs must provide enough information for the support team so that the support team doesn't call you back. They should completely understand what's going on and what is the source of the problem. You can't debug in production. Let's say you have released your application and everyone is downloading it. Some of the users are experiencing a problem. If your application does not have logging, you have to ask them to debug. And that's the most awful thing that you can ask, even if you are able to do that, because that's very hard to do and unpleasant. Logging is a second interface to your application, so you can understand what's going on inside your application without a user interface. Logging can be used for auditing, like knowing who did what, for profiling, for example, you understand which part of your application did what in how many seconds or milliseconds, and statistics, like how many times this particular action was called. Now, let's talk about what should we log. First of all, we want to know about all errors and exceptions that are happening in our application. We don't want to miss any errors. Make sure to include the stack traces when you log exceptions. Otherwise, they are useless. We want to know anything about security and auditing. We want to know who did what. We want to know information about software version, startups, shutdowns, and generally all life cycle. If we don't know about the version of the software that is running, we don't know which version was the corrupt version. So you should log the version of the application at every startup. We also need to know about any actions taken by users and their results. We want to know their checkouts, what happened during checkout operation, what was the result of it, and etc. You can also log for debugging and analyzation. For example, you want to know the value of the variables when something happened. Now let's talk about what shouldn't we log. We don't want to log sensitive data like service passwords, tokens, and etc. In fact, you should not even include these in your source code. You can use vaults such as Azure Vault for that. We also don't want to log users' private data like passwords, authorization tokens like access tokens, and financial data, for example, bank account and etc. We also don't log personal identifiable information such as personal name of the user or the address and any other personal information. Now let's talk about log levels. Some of the logs are more important than the other ones. That's why we add severity levels to our logs. There are different types of severity levels that we talk about now. First of all, there are development logs such as trace and debug. Trace is the lowest severity level of the logs. When you use trace, it's like tracing your code. You want to know every single detail about what happened. For example, you want to know when a method is getting called which, and with what parameters and maybe what happened in every single step in that method. We use debug level for the sole purpose of debugging. For example, we want to know the value of the variables at that moment. One of the differences between debug and trace is that when we use debug, some of the libraries can exclude debugs from the compilation, like they were never there. After that, it comes information. 
We use info for general information, like information about the startup of the application, or the shutdown, or what happened, or like user A did something, user B did something else, just general information. And finally, there are errors. The least level of error is warning. We use warning when the user experience is not compromised. For example, a service is not working, but we have another service that can do the same thing. For example, your advertisement service is not working. You can completely ignore it, or you can use another service for it. A higher level is error. We use error when the user experience is compromised. Like a part of application is not working, a component is not loading, a service is not working, and there are no other services. For example, your payment service is not working, and you can't do anything about that. That's an error. And the final level, which is the highest level of severity, is fatal. You want to use fatal when your application can't continue to work, and there is a serious problem happening. For example, there is something wrong with your database. Now take a look at this log file. As you can see, each line is representing a log. We start with date time. We want to know when the log happened. After that, we use log levels. We want to know immediately what was the level of that log. And then we put the message. There are many wrong things going on in this log. Take a deeper look because we are going to discuss about this. Now we are going to improve this log file. Just continue to watch. Now let's talk about log context. Take a look at these logs. We know what happened, but that's not enough. As you can see, we know cache was requested, but how much? For which account? Or the communication was failed to which server? We need context. Some of the things that we can use for context are Information about user, such as user ID, username, or other information about the user. We want to know which user was doing the action. Information about the current state. What is the current state of our application? If the state is changing, we want to know what was the previous state. Information about the parameters of the current action. We want to know how this action is executed. Information about the result of previous actions during executing the current operation. We want to know step by step what happened that took us to this point. As you can see here, we just added account number and the amount of the cache requested and the name of the server. Make sure your logs are machine parsable, meanwhile human readable. For example, here we could use Unix timestamp, but it wasn't human readable. Or here I've used brackets around values. This makes it easier to parse with machines. For example, using regex. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you how to log in JSON format. That would be much easier for machines to read. And it's also human readable. Now, let's talk about concurrent environments. Multiple users are using your application simultaneously and they're generating logs. But you don't know which log was generated after the other one. To solve this problem, we should associate each session with an ID, or we can use a trace ID or any distinguishable ID. Finally, choose a library. There are many well-tested libraries developed by the experts out there. Use one of them. Do yourself a favor and do not try to reinvent the wheel. Okay, that's it. If you have learned anything from this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There are more logging videos coming up very soon, so enable the notification bell. Until next time, enjoy logging.